Hello there you guys, welcome to another of my live videos and today I'm just going to be officially um, updating you on some more uh, current um, latest news. If you do consider, drop your likes and if you do consider, subscribe to the channel um, as always. So we do know that Manchester United you know, do need to take drastic action uh, this summer and we've got to get um, our number one uh, targets uh, this summer. And for me, we've got to be ruthless in this summer transfer window. We do need to rebuild because you can see the deficiencies um, in the squad and we've got to resolve uh, these problems uh, this summer. And I think, you know, to be quite honest with you, at least in the next couple of seasons, um, our aspirations um, is going to be uh, going uh, for that top four because we are at least you know three three or four years off I would believe you know from mounting um, any kind of a uh, title uh, challenge up and I think you know at the moment you know City are strides ahead of us you know Liverpool um, are strides um, ahead of us and you know they're way ahead of us um, at the moment and, and I think we're at least a couple of years off you know from graduating to City's level graduating uh, to Liverpool's level so we do need to uh, invest uh, this summer and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is reportedly you not know, going to get back this summer and obviously Man United are going to give him around two hundred and fifty million pounds to spend obviously I do agree that we need a structural change at the club and obviously you know we need to um, hire um, a director to the footballer to come in and it would be ideal you know to recommend someone to come in you know to take that direct as well you know someone who knows about the club someone who of course um, has also uh, got uh, the experience of course but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know wants to bring um, at least uh, five new additions uh, to the club this summer obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as it, I think he has said um, he's basically you know worked out um, his transfer strategy uh, for this summer because he did confirm Solskjaer that he has uh, had uh, quite um, a few meetings you know dis discussing um, about our recruitment and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has blatantly made it clear he wants to sign young players that can last uh, many many years um, at Manchester United so he wants to sign young players that you know can grow develop and emulate um, into superstars but I don't think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is intending on bringing um, any short term players to the club but he did say he's going to have his final say on our summer transfer plan Solskjaer you know what players come in and what players leave but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer still believes you know we can attract uh, players uh, to the highest level um, even though we're not in a Champions League uh, footballer for next season so Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, still believes you know we can uh, do this but reportedly he's going to get around uh, £250 uh, million pounds, uh, to spend. I do basically you know, now there's the, there's the vast majority um, of Manchester United fans, you know, demanding um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, out of the club, you know, based on our poor run of results, based on our uh, poor uh, run of um, performances. But as I did say to you yesterday, I'm not one of those fans that's demanding him out yet because I still think we've got to give him uh, the summer to spend. Okay, if this bad run of vein of form, you know, continues, uh, continues to persist going on into next season, then I will be a uh, critical of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and then I will demand him um, out of the club. You know, you'll get a few Manchester United fans saying maybe we give him the job too early, maybe we should have waited, you know, till this point maybe you know to make a decision you know whether he's you know to give him the job on a full-time basis um, or not so I, I do believe maybe you know we did uh, give him uh, the job uh, too early um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer but you know reflecting back when he's the when he was the interim manager you know in his first three months you know everything was going right you know the performances were good the results were really really good he was getting the best term um, out of these uh, group um, of players and he exceeded expectation levels did Ole Gunnar Solskjaer but since he's got the job permanently you know it's just seen to have um, all gone wrong and obviously in his three-year period he's got to exceed um, expectation levels obviously we all love Ole Gunnar Solskjaer obviously you know because he was a great great player for the club for 11 years um, under Alex Ferguson of course and he does uh, know uh, the club um, inside out but the question is has he got you know the stature and that and you know has he got the statue, stature you know to command Manchester United in that position you know where he uh, do currently uh, want to be but we are at least three or four years off you know from mounting um, a title challenge up and you know we have been you know playing catch up uh, in the last five um, six years you know since Al ever since Alex Ferguson retired uh, from the club you know we have been playing catch up um, in the last uh, five or um, six years you know we've had different managers with different philosophies a hell of a lot of money um, has been invested into the club I think we've spent like um, over uh, 700 odd million pounds you know since um, Alex Ferguson uh, retired so we have been playing catch up uh, for the last uh, five or um, six years but talking about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer he hasn't got uh, he hasn't got the experience um, of a manager hasn't really got the man he hasn't got a great managerial pedigree you know not to the um, highest uh, level um, anywhere so you'll get a lot of Manchester United fans you know demanding um, demanding him, uh, demanding him um, out of the club now but as I did say you know some of the blame is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the majority of the blame um, is on the players because I think, you know, potentially our squad is not good enough, you know, from back to front. You know, I think we're lacking leaders um, in that team. But, you know, going to Ole, saying about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, his, team, his, his tactics are questionable. His team selections um, are on. Look at yesterday, he played Ashley Young again. He played Phil Jones. He played Rashford. He played Lingard. So you've got to question him um, on that aspect, you know. Uh, you've got to really, really question that. Um, and, um... I don't know to be quite honest. I, w I will start criticising Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, if it does start to uh, go wrong um, in the new season. But as I did say, none of this squad is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's because he's inheriting 11 of Jose Mourinho's players. There's still some players here from Van Gaal. You know, there's Matt here from the David Moyes era. You know, there's four or five players here from the Alex Ferguson era. And I know that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, Matt, uh, you know, when he managed the Manchester United reserve team, you know, he watched some of these players, you know, grow um, and develop. But none of this squad is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So he's still in the process um, of rebuilding this Manchester United team. Um, is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So you can 
can see where the areas um, we are lacking and we've got to resolve these uh, problems uh, this summer. Obviously, we are expected to orchestrate a big summer clear out, but obviously, all the players we want to get rid of, we're not going to be able to do that um, in one, uh, one uh, summer uh, transfer win one transfer window. So, it's going to take a couple of windows, you know, to uh, come, yeah, do that. But as I did say, we're at least three or four years off, you know, from being um, a competitive elite level football club. But regardless of who the manager is, anyway, I know it's Solskjaer, but regardless of who the manager is, we're never ever going to achieve of, of what we achieved um, in terms of silver um, under Alex Ferguson, you know, in like what 20 uh, odd years um, of success under Alex Ferguson. And um, yeah, but we, you know, it's just not, it's just not on them at the moment. And you know, talking about if he's going to get around 250 million this summer, you know, that could probably get you around uh, five players or maybe even more uh, than five players. And maybe we should be sensible uh, with our recruitment uh, this summer uh, because there's quite a few players out there for a reasonable figure. Analyzing our recruitment policy um, is very, very um, poor um, indeed. But talking now about Mauricio Pochettino, I have, I've watched a few fan cams uh, yesterday um, after the game um, against Cardiff and I heard a Manchester United fan saying, you know, they'd like uh, Pochettino, you know, to uh, come to Manchester United and actually Pochettino for a very, very, lo very, very long time, you know, was linked uh, with the managerial uh, role um, at Old Trafford. Uh, Manchester, he was actually, you know, Manchester United's uh, number one, uh, number one, you know, to, to recommend that, you know, to come into the club. Uh, Pochettino, there has been talks about him going on, uh, saying that um, he could uh, reportedly uh, quit Tottenham um, after the Champions League final and he could quit Tottenham them if he's not back term in this uh, summer transfer window and I think Pochettino um, is set to um, hold, he, uh, hold uh, negotiations uh, with Daniel Levy set to uh, hold talks uh, with Daniel Levy you know the Tottenham chairman you know about his future and all that and I think Pochettino from his own perspective wants to know uh, that what uh, what Daniel Levy um, is planning uh, for the future before Pochettino makes a decision you know whether he resigns from Tottenham or whether he continues uh, with Tottenham of course And um, but Pochettino as I did currently say he's got more experience uh, than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer obviously Pochettino doesn't know anything about the club, you know, obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer does uh, know um, about the club, but Potocino, um has done very, very well with Tottenham, you know, he's been at Tottenham five seasons, obviously, you know, he's got them to their first Champions League final, he's got them Champions League uh, footballer uh, for next season, so he's done a really, really good job, he still hasn't proven himself yet in terms of, like, winning um, any silverware, so he hasn't got um, a great pedigree in terms of, like, winning any silverware, because he hasn't won um, any silverware yet, um, Richo uh, Pochettino, I think he's won over 100 odd games um, in the Premier League, but he is a uh, well Premier League proven, you know, he's had five good years uh, with Tottenham, you know, when he was at Southampton before it was only a short tenure he had he had with Southampton but he was still a very very good um, at Southampton you know uh, with Mauricio uh, Pochettino and obviously last summer he signed um, a new five year deal uh, with Tottenham uh, did Pochettino of course and um, Pochettino the question is if he was to come to Manchester United you know do you think he'd suit the Chappens of the club do you think he'd have the stature you know to command us in that position you know where we do you know, want to be but Pochettino yeah he's a really really good manager and um, he'd love obviously, he'd love to obviously you know win the Champions League um, of course but um, there has been talks that he could still possibly uh, leave uh, Tottenham and um, I think Real Madrid have been linked, uh, Real Madrid have wanted uh, Pochettino, but I think actually you know Pochettino um, has turned uh, the Real Madrid uh, job uh, down. But yeah, I think there's a few Manchester United fans you know demanding Pochettino uh, to come in because we was linked with him um, earlier on um, in the season. Of course, you know he was actually you know the favourite you know to come in. But I think I don't think he had any interest um, of coming to Manchester United at that moment um, in time because he, he wanted to you know basically uh, stay uh, with Tottenham. But I think you know he needs probably you know back in this summer Pochettino if he's got any chances um, of remaining um, at Tottenham because obviously you know if Tottenham want to be up there competing with the likes of City and Liverpool and if they want to be up there you know challenging for silverware obviously you know they need to uh, spend some money this summer and I think £254 million pounds has been spent at Tottenham since Pochettino got recommended in, in there he's been at Tottenham since 2014 um, as you all know but Tottenham have not done any transfer activity um, in the last uh, couple of windows you know they didn't spend out they didn't get anyone in January they didn't get anyone uh, last summer so Pochettino of course uh, does uh, want uh, back in uh, this summer so yeah there's still quite a few Manchester United fans you know demanding him uh, to come in and um as I did say, as I've been giving you an update um, on some transfer rumours, um, of course, uh, and um, as I updated you um, earlier on, you know, in regards to uh, Yari uh, Tillismans uh, from Leicester, it has said that Manchester United um, have been linked to him as a young player, um, he's 22 uh, years um, of age, I think it said Arsenal and Tottenham have also been interested um, in Yari Tillemans, and I think he'd be a great solution, I think he'd be a good addition um, in our midfield, you know, with Yari Tillemans, I think he's a central midfielder, obviously he's on loan um, at Leicester, he's only been on loan at Leicester, you know, since January, Leicester uh, got him on loan uh, from Monaco, but I think from uh, Yari Tillemans' uh, perspective, I think he's, uh, he's, he's said um, he's expected to uh, return uh, to, he's expected to return uh, to Monaco um, at the 
uh, at the end um, of his loan uh, with Leicester. This is what Yari Tillemans um, has currently um, said. But he is a good, good player. You know, he's 22 uh, years um, of age and um, he's very, very young. So he has uh, still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. Uh, Yari Tillemans reportedly is, uh, is valued reportedly um, at around uh, £40 million. Pounds. Um, I think Monaco want around uh, £40 uh, million pounds, uh, for the player. But Yari Tillemans, you know, I used to actually you know, play for Anderlecht, you know, when he was younger. You know, he played 185 games for Anderlecht. He scored 35 goals in like four seasons uh, with Anderlecht, you know, did uh, Yari uh, Tillemans. So, yeah, there has been a lot of talks about him. He has been on Manchester United's agenda. And I do believe, you know, we need creativeness in that midfield. You know, we need someone that can score goals uh, from that midfield. And I think, you know, Yari Tillemans, you know, would be uh, the right solution. And I also think Sporting Lisbon's uh, Bruno Fernandes, you know, would be uh, the right solution. So, I think Bruno Fernandes and Jordi Tillemans, you know, would get us them goals in that midfield. They'd have depth firm in our midfield. So, yeah, there has uh, been um, a lot of talks um, about them going on. But Bruno Fernandes, he has attracted interest in Manchester City. Reese reports have said that City um, have opted them um, out of the race for him. Obviously, a player of uh, Bruno Fernandes' calibre. Um, obviously, you know, Manchester City would be, uh, obviously, you know, the more um, attractive option uh, for Bruno Fernandes. But I think they've opted out of the race now. It did say City were in talks over around a £47 million deal. It did say City were willing to offer a couple of their players um, as part um, of the deal as well. Uh, but I think it's uh, sitting that have now um, opted out of the race and now that's given Manchester United advantage to go in for the player. Uh, Sporting Lisbon reportedly want around £60 million pounds, uh, for Bruno Fernandes. I think his in initial release clause um, is around £85, uh, £86 million. Pounds. But Man United have been scouting him for some time, you know, reflecting on his impressive performances uh, throughout the course of this season uh, with Sporting Lisbon. I think he's been at Sporting Lisbon um, a couple of seasons now, but I think he's scored about 31 goals throughout the course of this season. I think he's uh, provided about 16 um, or 17 um, assists. So I do think he'd be good in his 24 years years of age, you know, he has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him, had a lot of experience of playing in Italy when he was young, you know, with Sam Pandora and underneath, and I think Sporting has been paid around £8 million, pounds, was it, uh, for him uh, from Sam Pandora, but he is primarily um, an attacking uh, midfielder, um, is Bruno Fernandes, so we would see him um, as a good replacement uh, for Paul Pogba. Because obviously we do know Paul Pogba's on his way out um, of the club. And as I did say, we can get rid of Pogba, we can get rid of Lukaku. It's going to help us with our rebuilding process and it's going to help us uh, with our transition, of course. And we're getting £250 million pounds this summer, but we're cashing for Pogba, cashing for Lukaku. That's £200 million pound plus there. So that's going to take it to like over £450 million pounds to spend uh, for this summer. But Paul Pogba, of course, I think he wants out of the club, of course. And, you know, his performances have been really, really poor. And don't get me wrong, since Solskjaer's coming, we have seen glimpses of Paul Pogba's best form. It was mainly uh, under that three-month period when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I know, uh, was uh, the interim manager. But I think at least in the last seven or eight games, his performances have been poor and he's been so inconsistent. And that just emphasises that he doesn't want to be at Manchester United. And I think Man United could get at least um, around £130 million pounds for him. Obviously, Paul Pogba was heavily linked to a move away from Old Trafford last year based on his poor relationship with Jose Mourinho. Obviously, you know, Paul Pogba is a World Cup winner. But Paul Pogba did get one of his best wishes when Jose Mourinho, um, of course, uh, got uh, sat there from the club. And um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said he's spoken to Paul Paul Pogba and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer actually still insists he'll be still um, here uh, next season. I don't see Paul Pogba you know, being here uh, next season because he's intending um, on making uh, the move uh, to Real Madrid. And at least in the last couple of weeks, you know, Paul Pogba's agent Riley Ola has been in the process um, of finding him um, a new club. Obviously, he can't make a return back to Juventus at the moment, Paul Pogba anywhere, and I think he's going to Real Madrid anyway. But obviously, his agent Riley Ola got a free month of transfer ban uh, by the Italian FA. So this means Riley Ola can't conduct any transfers um, in Italy for the next three months. So obviously, this, is, this isn't going to affect Paul Pogba making his move to Real Madrid. I think Real Madrid are not willing to pay up to they're not willing to pay 160 million pounds for Paul Pogba. Reports came out saying that um uh, reports uh, came out saying that Real Madrid were not willing to match his £290,000 a week wages so it did say Paul Pogba would have to take um, a pay cut but maybe um, a player of Paul Pogba's calibre you know once we play into the highest level once we play playing amongst uh, better players of course and he isn't getting this um, at Manchester United and still uh, got uh, three years uh, left um, on his contract term um, as Paul Pogba but he was talking a lot about Real Madrid you know weeks back you know saying he's dream to play for them um, and all that and you know, I think he's keen on playing um, under uh, Zinedine Zidane um, his Pogba and um, you know obviously you know, Zinedine Zidane um, is a big um, admirer um, of the player and um, that's one of his uh, main priority targets uh, for this summer, you know, as Zinedine uh, Zidane's his two main targets are obviously, you know, Paul Pogba and Chelsea's um, Eden Hazard but I think it'll be beneficial, you know, if we can uh, cash in uh, for Paul Pogba, we can get at least £130 million and with, and with that money we uh, you know, we uh, cash in, you know, for Pogba, you know, we could get two players there uh, with that money so we go get Yori Tillemans, you know, say £40 million, pounds. I don't think he'll come though but example, Yori Tillemans, £40 million Bruno Fernandes, call it 50 or £60 million, so that's about 90 or £100 million pounds, um, on two uh, players uh, there so, 
yeah, I think they'd be the right solution. I mean, that midfield, you know, if they were to uh, possibly, you know, come in. But yeah, it's looking like Paul Pogba's on his way out. And I think Solskjaer is, uh, is built a great relationship up there with Paul Pogba. But recent reports have said that their, uh, their relationship um, is slowly uh, fading um, away. So yeah, it's looking like he's on his way out of the club, uh, Paul Pogba. Um, other midfielders uh, that have been mentioned, um, of course, um, as I'll give you an update on. Obviously, you know, Everton's Adrissa Gay. Um, as there's been a lot of talks about him going on um, in the media. Adrissa Gay, now, I don't really know much about um, Adrissa Gay, to be quite honest. I know he's 29 years of age, he's highly experienced, um, he's aging up, he's actually the same age um, as Ander Herrera and obviously we know Ander Herrera is leaving the club so we would obviously you now emphasise Idris Gay as a replacement of, uh, an, as an ideal replacement of an Ander Herrera and now Idris Gay is obviously you know, well Premier League proven, he's been in the Premier League um, a number of years now um, as Idris Gay, I think it's a number of years now um, Idris Gay um, has been um, in the Premier League, um, I think he's been at Everton um, over three three years now um, as Idris Gay, obviously the majority um, of his appearances that have come in the Premier League you know, I've obviously you know come um, at Everton. I think he's made about 99 appearances in the Premier League for Everton, so just under 100 appearances he's made for Everton in the Premier League. But overall, I think he's made about 134 appearances. Obviously, because uh, he had one season there with Aston Villa, where he did make about 34 or 35 um, appearances. You know, the um, Madrid again, and uh, yeah, and I, I think reportedly Everton want around 40 million pounds for him. That's obviously all. Um, that's obviously a. Uh, uh, five times that's obviously uh, over five times more than what Everton um, initially paid for him because Everton just paid over seven million pounds for him uh, for Aston Villa. Of course, they triggered a release clause in his contract and got him for just um, over seven million pounds. Adrissa Gay, um, of course, has still uh, got three years left um, on his contract. He actually uh, was it in February of last year. Um, he got his contract uh, renewed um, until 2022 uh, with Everton. But he's the defensive midfielder. You know, he holds his line very, very well. He's an energetic uh, midfielder. Breaks up the play very, very well. He's very tenacious. So yeah, there's been um, a lot of talks um, about him. You know. Uh, going on, I think Everton are coming to uh, are willing to um, accept that he does uh, want to uh, leave uh, the club. So reportedly, um, he's on a uh, Manchester United's um, agenda. Um, is Idris Gay. <laughs> But he's 29 years of age, and as I did say, comparing Idris again and the Herrera, you, you can say Ander Herrera is the better player. You can say Ander Herrera has ha, ha, had the better um, of the career than Idris Gay. But Ander Herrera, I think it's bad business for Manchester United, you know, letting Ander Herrera go. You know, why we're letting Ander Herrera go? Because you could say since Ferguson's retired, he's been one of our uh, best players. And, you know, we're letting a, va a, va a valuable player go. I'm not only letting him go, we're letting him go on a free transfer um, as well. And that is bad, bad, uh, that's bad business uh, for Manchester United. And um, this is what I don't understand. Understand why are we giving Phil Jones a new long-term contract? Why are we giving Chris Small a new long-term contract? Why are we giving Ashley Young a new one-year extension? I just can't understand it. And this is a problem with Manchester United. We're letting far too many players' uh, contracts uh, run down. And uh, Ander Herrera, he's, he's a valuable player to us. I, can't, I, don't, I don't know why we're letting him go on a free transfer. I know Man United, you know, tried to get him a new contract. You know, we was in negotiations to try to get him a new contract. But Ander Herrera was reportedly demanding two hundred thousand pounds a week. He's not worth two hundred thousand pounds a week. But anyway, Man United were not willing to meet his two hundred thousand pounds a week he was uh, reportedly uh, demanding so this means he's made his, his, his decision now he's, intended, he's going to uh, Paris Saint-Germain but Ander Herrera has agreed a four year deal with PSG uh, the terms have obviously you know, uh, been um, agreed he's set to earn around 150 or £160,000 a week uh, with Paris Saint-Germain um, he's Ander Herrera obviously he's, he's had five good seasons with Manchester United You know, he's made 189 appearances for the club in all competitions You know, he's won the FA Cup the League Cup and the Europa League uh, with us and um, yeah and he won, I think he won the Smart Buster Player of the Year award was it back in uh, 2016 um, and 17. But, you know, analysing it, you know, since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has come in, you know, the majority of the games, you know, that Ander Herrera has been playing in, you know, we have mainly uh, won um, games uh, when Ander Herrera has been involved. So that just emphasises how much of an impact, you know, Ander Herrera, of course, uh, makes um, in that midfield. And uh, when Ander Herrera plays in that midfield, you know, we do seem to get the best um, out of Paul Pogba because when Ander Herrera is in that midfield, you know, he frees up uh, the likes um, of Paul Pogba. But um, as I said, I'm going to miss um, Ander Herrera, you know, to be quite honest with you. But as I did say, at some point, you know, every player's uh, tenure uh, comes uh, to an end. And that's what you've just got to accept. And now we've got to go in that market um, and find um, a replacement uh, for Ander Herrera. But Man United just paid under £30 million for him uh, from Atletico uh, Bilbao. Obviously, Ander Herrera done just recently got back in the team anyway. And I can't understand why he didn't play yesterday against Cardiff. Uh, but obviously, just he, he only recently you know, just uh, recovered uh, from a long-term um, injury. So he's only just recently you know, got back in the team. But he didn't uh, play um, against uh, Cardiff uh, yesterday. You know, did um, Ander Herrera. Some people saying if he'd have played, would he beat uh, Cardiff? Because we just know how much of an, an impact he makes in that midfield. And when he's playing to his potential best, He's like two plays in one um, in that midfield. So, yeah, we've got to get um, a replacement uh, for Ander Herrera, um, and that's uh, very, very um, essential um, indeed. 
And uh, so do you think Idrissa Gay, you know, would be um, the right uh, solution, you know, to replace Amanda um, Herrera at um, the club? And um, Declan Rice, you know, there has been a hell of a lot of talks um, about uh, West Ham's uh, Declan Rice. And I really, really like Declan Rice. He's 20 years of age. Um, he's one of um, England's uh, youngest um, upcoming talents, is Declan Rice. And, you know, he's been at West Ham a number of years now. He's been in the West Ham senior squad um, uh, quite a few years now as Declan Rice. But his performances throughout the course of um, this season for West Ham have been absolutely fantastic. And he's flourishing. He's growing, developing, he's, and he's uh, flourishing uh, fantastically well, um, is Declan Rice. And he could be available for around what forty, fifty million pounds, you know, uh, Declan Rice. But he has uh, been uh, one of um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, prime targets, and I like Declan Rice. I think he's a good player. He breaks up the play very, very well. He's an energetic uh, midfielder and holds his line very, very well. I think he's primarily defensive midfielder. You can put him as a centre back, but I think he's primarily a defensive midfielder. And Declan Rice, um, he's Premier League proven, as I said, he's learned his trade um, in the Premier League, and he's still twenty years of age, and he's still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. And um, he's obviously a former Chelsea player, of course, as well. Where he He's not their youth system for a lot of years. Well, he played for well, he joined Chelsea's youth academy at the age of seven. He was in actually Chelsea's youth academy uh, for a number of years, and I think he got, he got um, axed off um, at the age of fourteen. But he's been fantastic for West Ham. He's got a long term contract with West Ham um, until two thousand twenty four, which I, I, I do think he signed in, in December um, of last year. So yeah, I think he'd be very very good for us with Declan Rice. We do know Joe Felix now. Um, Joe Felix has been a lot of talks about him going on and um, Manchester United have been linked to him you know Man City have also been linked to Joe Felix and um, Man United have been scouting him you know for a number of months you know reflecting um, on his um, impressive performances uh, for Man uh, impressive performances sorry uh, this season uh, for Benfica Man United um, have been scouting him um, he's only 19 years of age um, he's got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him if I'm right I think this is only his first season uh, this has only been his first season um, in the senior squad uh, with Benfica uh, Joe uh, Felix is and um, yeah and he, I don't think he's yet made um, his senior day with Portugal. I think he's got a buyout clause um, of around um, £100 million pounds, um, as Joel Felix. Um, he's primarily an attacking midfielder. I think he can play as a winner and a striker, so um, he's uh, versatile. So he's been linked uh, with a move uh, to Old Trafford. I think we were linked with, uh, what, uh, was it, uh, with Joel Felix uh, back in the January transfer window. So yeah, there has been a lot of talks about him going on. Obviously, the club's number one priority target, you know, has obviously, you know, been Jadon Sancho. You know, Man United have been linked to him for a long, long time now, Jadon Sancho. But I don't see Jadon Sancho coming in uh, because recent reports did say, you know, Jadon Sancho is set to turn down a £100 million move to Manchester United and he's uh, set to uh, remain uh, loyal to Borussia Dortmund at least uh, for another year. And from Borussia Dortmund's perspective, uh, they are very, very convinced that he will uh, remain um, at Borussia Dortmund at least uh, for another season. But uh, Jadon Sancho is 19 uh, years um, of age and maybe a play of Jadon Sancho's calibre wants to be in Champions League football but I'd love Manchester United you know, to get a player um, of his quality because I think if he was to make a return back to the Premier League you know, it would, it would uh, create him a better platform uh, for Jadon Sancho and he's one of um, England's um, uh, one of England's hottest um, upcoming uh, prospects but um, I think he's primarily a winner I think you can put him as a, uh, I think you can put him like more centrally but I think Jadon Sancho um, is primarily um, a winner he can score goals he can provide and you know he can play between the byline he can put good crosses um, into the box and Manchester United um, have been a uh, heavily the link to him and um, he's been at Borussia Dortmund a couple of seasons obviously he's had experience of playing in the Premier League you know with Manchester City and all that And um, but yeah Jadon Sancho has got a contract with Borussia Dortmund um, until 2022 so I think he's set to remain uh, loyal uh, with Borussia Dortmund so it's looking likely we're not going to get Jadon Sancho this summer who of course um, is the club's uh, number one priority target and Borussia Dortmund have been known for doing business with their players. You know, they did it with Christian Pulisic. You know, they did it with Aubameyang. You know, they did it uh, with uh, Usain Dembele, of course. But um, as I said, we've got the financial power to meet Jadon Sancho's valuation. But as I did say, nah, we're not going to get him. He, I think he's set to reject um, a £100 million uh, move uh, to Old Trafford. So it's looking likely we've missed out um, on Jadon Sancho, which is a disappointment. I also believe the club need a right back. And, you know, we need a replacement for Antonio Valencia because we know Valencia is going. Um, obviously, he's been, don't get me wrong, he's been a good term to club you know he's been here um, a decade of course but throughout if you analyse throughout the course um, of this season you know the majority of it you know he's been um, out uh, with injury obviously you know um, he's initially lost um, his place um, in the team and um, yeah Man United had the option you know to trigger that extension you know to trigger his contract you know to maybe convince him to stay for another season but obviously Man United opted um, against that decision so Valencia is leaving uh, this summer when his uh, contract term expires obviously he's made over 300 other appearances for the club in all competitions he won the Smart Buzzy Player of the Year award you know back in uh, 2012 uh, did Antonio of Lens. He did come. He did play the final. Was it twenty minutes um, of the game uh, yesterday um, against Cardiff? It did say he, he should. He, he was going to probably um, be involved anywhere. And um, yeah, so we know he's leaving. So we do need um, a replacement uh, for Antonio Valencia. Talks of Van Wan Pasaka. He'd be a good replacement for Valencia, in my opinion. He'd be. He'd be the perfect successor to Valencia. But I don't think we're getting Van Wan Pasaka because reports came out a while back saying that Van um, Wan Pasaka um, is fully. Um, 
He's fully committed to Crystal Palace and he's intending on staying um, at Crystal Palace um, at least uh, for another season. But he's 21 years of age. But I think his defensive abilities are very, very good. Um, you know, I think he his defensive capabilities are good. And I think he'll have the ability to elevate Manchester United at least over the next two to three years, of course. And uh, I've, we've been having linked with Aaron wan Pasaka, but I think he's fully uh, committed uh, to Crystal Palace. I do believe we need an upgrade uh, to Ashley Young. The one thing I can't understand is why we give Ashley Young, um, a, new, Ashley Young a new one-year extension. Can't understand why he keeps getting selected, to be quite honest with you. And... Uh, um, Ash Young's passed his sell by day at the club. You know, he's been here, what, eight years, seven or eight years. It's one of them. You know, he's made over 300 other appearances for the club in all competitions. And Ash Young, for me, he, he is the main factor of the problem at Manchester United. And we've got to get rid of him this summer. I don't think we will get rid of him. I think the club will probably wait till his one-year extension expires. Then he will probably uh, end up going because obviously he'll be, be nearly 35 by time. He'll be nearly 35 by time um, um, expires. And obviously, anywhere then, he'll be coming to a halt um, of his playing career where will Ashley Young. Don't get me wrong, reflecting back when he was younger, you know, he was really, really good, you know, when he was a winner um, Ashley Young, and he has been essential um, over the years, but, you know, he's just he's just now, he's past um, his sell by day, and I think, you know, we've got to uh, get him um, out of the club. I know we've got Diego Dalot there, but I still believe we need a, uh, a backup to Diego Dalot, because Diego Dalot is the upcoming future, um, of course, so we do need a backup uh, for Diego Dalot. I do believe we need a central defender, we definitely need someone that can go alongside Victor Lindelof, because very, very bad judgement for Manchester United, you know, giving Small in a new long-term contract, giving Jones a new long-term contract, I don't understand why we did that and you know talking about you know comparing Phil Jones and Chris Small and Chris Small is a much better defender there than Phil Jones but I do believe maybe both of them need to go and I don't think either of them will go this summer to be quite honest with you you know Phil Jones has been here what seven eight years I think this is now Chris Small his ninth season at Manchester United and um, yeah and I, I, I want both of them to go I don't think they will but I think Chris Small is a much much better uh, defender uh, than Phil Jones Phil Jones of course now um, has sustained um, another injury I think he's injury prone Phil Jones you know he's sustained you know, quite a few injuries don't get me wrong over the years he has demonstrated when he can get the money games he can perform well for Manchester United but you know for me I think you know Jones uh, needs to uh, get um, out of the club and um, uh, Eric Bay you know he's too injury prone you know Eric Bay you know we got him in 2016 from Villarreal of course Man United paid £30 million pounds for him um, of course um, from Villarreal uh, I think Man United looking to recoup the initial £30 million we paid, £30 million pound we paid for him you know if we can uh, get rid of him uh, this summer I do highly rate Eric Bay I think he's got great potential but he's, he's struggled to get in the team you know this season's Eric Bay because Solskjaer especially you know has preferred the likes of Smalling and Jones um, ahead of um, Eric Bay, so there has been rumours you know that he could be uh, leaving uh, the club and um, Marcus Rojo I think he's the one of the obvious players that's going to leave uh, this summer well I hope anywhere you know Diamond's probably one of the obvious players uh, that's going to uh, leave uh, this summer and looking at Rojo and Diamond you know we could get around uh, 30 million pounds uh, for Rojo um, and Diamond uh, which is uh, very very good and um Talking about um, Alexis Sanchez, yeah, get rid of him as well. No good for the club. Um, obviously, aging up now anywhere. 30 years of age, has uh, lost uh, that yard um, of pace. Sanchez, you know, his wages are really, really having a bad effect term um, on this football club. And I think Man United may have to pay maybe a quarter of his wages or maybe half his wages, you know, to get rid of him uh, this summer. Because uh, Sanchez is totally, totally poor, you know. I thought when we got him 15, 16 months ago, you know, he would have been a fundamental player for Manchester United, you know. Looking what he did at Arsenal, looking, you know, obviously, you know, he played um, under Pep Guardiola, you know, when he was younger, um, Alexis Sanchez, you know, when Sanchez uh, was at Barcelona, and Sanchez did really, really good for Barcelona, but we do know he's versatile. Uh, we mainly put him on the left when we do play him, you know, which is not very often anyway. Man United don't mainly uh, play him, but analysing at Arsenal, I think the majority of his goals came up front, uh, but Alexis Sanchez is so um, inconsistent, isn't it? and he's become an injury prone player, you know, since he's uh, come uh, to Manchester United, and this, I think he's now got an ankle injury, and this is, I think this is now his fourth injury he has sustained um, as a Manchester United play because initially before he sustained this ankle injury he just uh, recovered her from a knee injury um, Alexis uh, Sanchez but yeah we've got to get rid of him in the summer and he's the highest player player at the club he's the highest uh, player uh, player um, in the Premier League so yeah we've got to get rid of him you know Matter, I'd love Wamata to stay for at least um, another season but I don't see it happening even though it did say Man United were willing to give him um, a new one year um, extension uh, Wamata has been a really really good servant to the club I know he's a squad player now Wamata doesn't um, even uh, really really uh, get um, in the team but um, yeah he's still been a very very consistent player for us he's been at Manchester United five years, you know, he's been in the Premier League about in, in total about eight years as one matter and um, he had two and a half, three good years with Chelsea when he was younger, uh, one matter but you know, I think he's intending on making a return to Spain because he's Spanish himself he had a lot of experience um, playing him in Spain you know, did one matter, you know, when he was uh, younger you know, with Real Madrid and Valencia but I think one matter is intending on making the move to Barcelona, uh, it did say Barcelona were in talks of getting him on a, um, a free transfer but obviously Barcelona aren't going to see him um, as a replacement for Messi obviously they're just going to uh, use him um, as a squad 
play where Juan Mata because Juan Mata's now 31. Um, he's no longer playing to the highest level. He has uh, lost um, that yard um, of pace. So, yeah, I can see him uh, leaving uh, the club, uh, Juan Mata. And, um, yeah, so there's going to be quite a few players uh, leaving. You know, I think probably about four or five will go. Obviously, the, all the players we want to leave, we're not going to be able to do that in one, uh, one uh, transfer uh, window. But, um, yeah, and De Gea, I don't know what's going on with him at the moment. Obviously, De Gea um, has not uh, yet uh, signed him a new contract, of course. And uh, I don't know what's happening with him. And, obviously, we can't come to any agreement to get De Gea a new contract. We want to cash in for him this summer rather than letting go on a free um, in the summer of 2020. De Gea has been linked with a move to PSG, uh, a £90 million move to PSG. Obviously, Real Madrid um, have been long admirers of, um, of David De Gea. So, if David De Gea is to leave the club, obviously, we're going to need um, a replacement uh, for him. But he's still potentially the best goalkeeper um, in the world. Again, I've, had, I've, I've admired his fantastic career at Manchester United so far. He's been here eight years. You know, he's won the club's player of the year four times out of the last five seasons. You know, he's won the Smack Buzzard player of the year award three times out of the year, last four years. De Gea, you know, he's won everything um, here uh, domestically. And, um, yeah, so De Gea's future um, still uh, remains um, uh, not uh, uncertain um, at the moment. And uh, maybe a goalkeeper, Dav David De Gea's uh, calibre, you know, wants to be playing to the highest level, wants to be up there, you know, you know, competing and winning stuff and that. He was talking about this a while back, you know, about his ambitions, you know, to be winning trophies and stuff and being involved in, like, Champions League finals and stuff. And, um, yeah... So um, whether David De Gea stays or goes or not, um, I do not know. But yeah, there has uh, been um, a lot of talks about that. I think David De Gea has made over 300 appearances um, in all competitions uh, for Manchester United. And um, yeah, there has uh, been um, a lot of talks um, about him. So we have not yet come to an agreement to get him a contract. He did say reportedly he was demanding £350,000 a week from the club. Uh, Man United were only willing to offer him around £300,000 um, a week. And um, yes, I don't know what's going on uh, at the moment uh, with David De Gea. Uh, we do know Luke Shaw's won the Samat Busby uh, Player of the Year award, as I did uh, give you an update on uh, the other day. And um, yeah, so these serious, serious problems at um, Manchester United, you know, that do uh, need to be addressed this summer. I wouldn't sack Ole Gunnar Solskjaer now, because as I did say, we haven't got the structure, you know, to uh, keep uh, sacking our uh, managers. I think we need to get Ed Woodward um, out of this club, that's the start. And um, yeah, so we're, we're just, we're just going to have to back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You know, I'm always going to back him for, for our Avalon, um, he, he's our uh, manager. But if it goes wrong going into next season, then I will want him um, out um the club, but it's essentially it's just it depends who he gets in in the summer, and it's you know there's, oh, there's a lot of players Manchester United want to bring in, but you can't get every player um, in world football, and that's just the way uh, football uh, works. But as I did say, it's not all about the Glasgow players, it's not all about spending big on players because it doesn't always get 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 you you know where you want to currently be. Because this football club have got a history of uh, investing loads of money on players, you know, seventy five million Lukaku, eighty nine million Paul Popper doesn't always guarantee you you know where you do currently uh, want to be. So maybe we should get some young players is in, you know, maybe Daniel James, I, I like Daniel James of what I've seen of him and that, and, you know, I've read some of his statistics up and it doesn't uh, look bad to be quite angry, and he's a shock solution that's uh, been mentioned, you know, Manchester United being linked to him, he's a championship player, he's uh, Daniel James, he's 21 years of age, you know, he's still uh, got a lot of years ahead of him, he's a low expectation, he's a cheap um, acquisition, um, he's Daniel James, and he's primarily, he primarily, you know, plays um, on, on that uh, left-hand side, uh, there's Daniel James, so, yeah, there has been um, a lot of talks about him, and reportedly he could be one of our uh, first signings, and, uh, I think if he comes in, you know, maybe Anthony Martial's uh, future, uh, Anthony Martial's future could be in even more serious jeopardy. And um, because with Martial, um, his performances have been way below par um, in the last uh, couple of months. You know, Rashford's performances have been way below par um, in the last uh, couple of months. Because talking about Rashford, he hasn't graduated to that level yet. As I did say, it's going to take Rashford at least a couple of years, you know, to emulate to that level. Lingard's performances have been way below par um, in the last uh, couple of months. So I do believe the majority of this Manchester United squad, you know, do uh, need um, a reality check. And that's just the way it is, you know, to be um, quite honest with you. So, um, Anyway, guys, uh, drop your quiet slides below on the channel. Um, if you do, consider a subscriber to my channel, um, as always. And, you know, would you like Yori Till Tillemans um, at Manchester United? You know, there has been a lot of talks about him going on. He's a 22-year-old. He's a 22-year-old. He's Belgian. Um, he plays for Leicester. And since he's gone to Leicester on loan, he's been uh, very, very um, impressive. But I think from Tillemans' perspective, he wants to make um, a return, uh, back, he wants to return uh, back to Monaco when his loan spell ends uh, with Leicester uh, City. So, yeah, there has uh, been um, a lot of talks about him going on. So anyway, guys, drop your quite slides below the channel. As I said, if you do, consider subscribing to my channel. Um, as always, and take care. God bless, guys, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.